Imagine, you're a lady, London, late 1700s. It's dark out and you have just been to a ball or a theater, whatever young, beautiful women did back then. And you had just a short walk home, you weren't that concerned. Until a strange man appears, shouting obscenities at you. Fine, happens to the best of us. And you start moving, running a bit faster to get away from said man. But then you feel a sting in your posterior. You turn around and the man is just standing there staring at you menacingly and then vanishes. You run home the short little bit you still have left and when you come home you realize that your petticoat and your dress is drenched in blood. You have been slashed in thy buttocks and you are the latest victim of the monster. Morbid history. Hi and welcome back to Morbid History where we discuss the dark and macabre from our weird past. Today we travel back to London in 1788. A time of powdered wigs and elaborate petticoats and lots and lots of decorum. Yes, classy and elegant people. But in the midst of all this, there emerged a villain. So peculiar, so bizarre, he earned himself the understated moniker, The Monster. And what gave him this lovely nickname, you may ask yourself and I shall tell you. Well, he was a little fiend that enjoyed pricking bums of beautiful young ladies, by all accounts. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what this video is all about. The forgotten serial slasher of London. It all started in 1788, and the streets of London were teeming with life, some more sinister than others. Among the hustle and bustle, a series of attacks just popped up out of nowhere and spread fear among the fashionable ladies of the town. The victims, usually young and beautiful, reported that they suddenly would feel a sharp sting to their rear and turn around finding that the culprit had disappeared into a sea of top hats and crinolines. Just vanished. Others told that he would first come up to them and uh, just shout obscenities, weird things, wanting to copulate with said strange lady from a strange man, I mean they're strangers. Either way he wasn't being a very gentlemanly many man and when they had enough of it he would then prick them with a small pin or dagger into their posterior and then disappear into wherever he went. At first it started spreading like a rumor, it was just too bizarre, you could only whisper about it over a stiff cup of tea there in London. But after a while, just more and more women started coming forward with the same scenario. And reality began sinking in. They had a monster on their hands. And not just any kind of monster, he just wanted to stab these ladies in their most unprotected area. His weapon of choice would be a sharp long pin, a small knife, or some even said that he had a bouquet of fake flowers that he would ask ladies to sniff, and when they did, 
he stabbed them quickly in the face with it. The days he wasn't feeling like striking buttocks. And an even weirder statement was that he had some kind of contraption that fastened small daggers to his knees that he would like kick the lady's buttocks with and that way do his bum slashing. An inventive monster, I think I'm gonna stick my head out here and say that that's worse than any old regular monster. Yeah. And this just quickly spread through London and everyone were out to get this fiend. Who was he? Was he like a just a sadist? Was he a madman or a weird prankster? A sadistic prankster with a cruel sense of humor? There were so many theories and also as many descriptions of the monster himself. Some say he was a very large and burly man who heckled and said obscene things. Some said he was a smaller, thinner man who just ran off into uh, thin air. The only thing they seemed to agree on was that he had a large nose, but he had brown hair, he had blonde hair, he had freckles, he was unfreckled, he had pockmarks, he had, didn't have pockmarks. There were so many descriptions of this monster. Some even thought that he was a very wealthy man and therefore he had the money and resources to like dress up in different kinds of costumes and wigs and stuff. And that's the reason why there were so many different accounts of him. One great mystery here, I think, is how such a large and burly man with large nose with weapons fastened to his knees could so easily just vanish without a trace. The women of London were not having it though, and they were nothing but resourceful. They were they adapted quickly. They started stuffing their bustles like the thing that made the dresses poof and they made them poof even more to give some extra coverage and protection from the stabby stab stabs. Some even fasten like uh, pots and pans to their bums in a way to uh, gain some extra protection. Of course, that's very smart. Corsets would also be like made so that they extended further down offering some extra protection. They needed it. It was like creating some uh, makeshift barriers so that this fiend of a man couldn't come and prick them in their private part. Other ways they protected themselves if they didn't want to tie things to their buttocks, they would just go around in large groups with parasols that they could use, holding them over their buttocks or like just using them if someone strange came too close to them and some just carried around some knives of their own in case they needed them. This hysteria brought some other weird factoids with it. It was said that the bum slasher only went after beautiful, fancy, young ladies. Some man had taken it upon himself to actually grade all the victims and decided that. He went out and t told London that it seemed like the victims were very, very pretty and in the cases where the victim wasn't that pretty, it was usually a uh, two for one and the other victim was the pretty one and the non-pretty victim just happened to be there. This culminated in many ladies actually reporting that they had been attacked 
falsely because that would mean that they were desirable enough for the bum slasher to attack them. Then also came the reward. A man went and put out a bunch of flyers saying that a bunch of money would be given to the person who caught the monster and that resulted in false reportings too bunch of them like anyone who had an enemy a nemesis a vendetta against anyone just punched them and dragged them to the police and said here you have the monster <sighs> which they of course weren't there's even an account of a guy who uh, assaulted a butcher because his clothes were bloody and he was carrying a knife and dragged him to the police yeah they simply just wanted to shout monster at someone and claim that sweet sweet reward either way the monster's reign carried on for two years and in 1790 it all stopped as quickly as it began there were 50 real victims that like they actually knew that it all happened to and the authorities they actually tried they increased patrol and organized special units just to track down the monster but it nothing helped they just had a bunch of suspects like way too many suspects i would guess but the real monster remained an enigma leaving behind nothing but fear and bruised buttocks there was one suspect though that uh, we know more about than the rest and that was a man named runwick williams he was accused by a beautiful young lady called anne porter and was dragged to trial. He admitted to have approached Anne at one point and harassed her, being a nauseous in general, because he was known to do that, being irritating to women in general. But he had an alibi for the supposed attack. That did not help him though. He was first actually sentenced and this is a, f a wild ride actually he was sentenced to defacing clothing which was a felony punishable by demise it was a law that had c came about years prior when rich aristocrats had started importing fancy fabrics and making clothing ignoring the poor english fabric makers and those people had been so upset that they had went out into the streets and slashed and thrown things on the fancy people's clothing to destroy the fancy fabrics and um, a law had come about then that destroying anyone's clothing by malice was punishable by death or being shipped off to australia yes so he was first uh, yeah he charged with that he was gonna get him a little cancellation sentence for defacing female clothing with his knife not the stabby part lucky for Rinwick he had a retrial and in that trial he was sentenced to assault and attempted murder which was actually just a misdemeanor not a felony at all so now they were more into the whole stabby part and decided that his main mission was to stab not to destroy the clothing so that resulted in assault attempted murder and that wasn't as bad as trying to destroy the clothing so he was instead sentenced to six years in prison 
most historians today agree and uh, yeah he, he wasn't actually the monster at all just a little gross guy who liked to harass women so in the end the monster the serial bun slasher of London remains a mystery was it just a mass hysteria was there several people going around stabbing women's rears like a copycat situation like when the thing became so big people just started doing it I think that sounds like the most plausible explanation because we know that someone did it it's just a very weird and bizarre mystery that often is just glossed over in history like when we talk about morbid and weird stuff it's a bum slasher for heaven's sake no one was cancelled there was one lady who almost did but she 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 came through in the end so no one was hurt in uh, the making of the london serial bum slasher monster Heh. so this tale is a reminder that not all monsters lurk in the shadows some walk among us with nothing but a little dagger and a sadistic imagination i guess let me know your theories down below thanks for watching thank you so much for watching and giant thanks to my lovely lovely patreons you're my heroes if you want to support the channel find links down below for my patreon and ko-fi if you want to leave a tip and also i have a shop where i make some handmade crafts so yeah like and subscribe and comment down below stay amazing stay hydrated but most of all stay morbid bye bye